In this video, we will look at sections 4, 5, and 8 of chapter 18. In sections 2 and 3 of chapter 18, we talked about galvanic cells, which produce a current, and that current then can be uh, used to do work. Uh, work that can be accomplished depends on the driving force of the electrons. Uh, we calculated the cell potential in sections 2 and 3. However, as we've discussed, work is never the maximum possible. Uh, there is always going to be some waste. And so actual work um, is always less than the calculated maximum. The maximum cell potential, so the maximum voltage uh, for a cell is directly related to the free energy difference, delta G, uh, between the reactants and products in the cell. So this equation here makes a connection between thermodynamics and electrochemistry. This equation is on your equation sheet. N is the number of moles of electrons that we are talking about moving through our cell. F is called a Faraday. It's 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. This is also on your equation sheet. And then uh, the E there is the cell potential. And we were talking about that being in volts. Um, but the way that breaks down unit wise is a joule per coulomb of charge. So when we look at the units, we can see that moles will cancel and then coulombs will cancel, and we will be left with our delta G, our free energy difference, in joules. Also notice this negative sign here. We will have a positive cell potential, which is what we're looking for in our thermodynamically favored redox reactions. However, with delta G, uh, we wanted to see a negative delta G or a negative free energy change for our thermodynamically favored processes. So overall, our answer uh, will be negative, which is the sign we'd like to see for delta G, even though our cell potential, our voltage is positive. Let's do an example where we calculate delta G for a redox reaction. And we're going to use the table uh, that we used in sections two and three to find the um, voltage for each half reaction. Here are the two half reactions. Uh, copper ion with a plus two charge, plus two electrons, gives us copper atoms. Um, that is 0.34 volts. Iron atoms become iron ions with a plus two charge, and that is 0.44 volts. When I add the two half reactions together, I get 0.78 volts for the standard cell potential. When I use the equation on the previous slide, I have negative uh, two moles of electrons times that Faraday constant, 96,485 coulombs per mole, times the cell potential, 0.78 volts, which is 0.78 joules per coulomb. My answer for delta G is negative 1.5 times 10 to the fifth joules. That could definitely be converted to kilojoules by dividing by a thousand. But because of that negative sign, um, our delta G is negative, just as it should be for thermodynamically favored or spontaneous processes. In section five, we're gonna look at how concentration affects cell potential. So far, our concentrations have been standard, one molar. But if we say increase the concentration of a reactant or uh, decrease the concentration of a product, we're gonna see our voltage increase. We're gonna see an increase in the driving force of our electrons. 
And if we do the opposite, um, if we decrease the concentration of a reactant or increase the concentration of a product, um, our voltage is going to decrease. The driving force of our electrons decreases. So for example, uh, here's our um, redox reaction, all balanced with a standard cell potential of 0.48 volts. We're gonna just make a prediction uh, whether the cell potential should be larger or smaller than the standard when we change our concentrations. So in A, uh, the aluminum ion concentration is two molar and aluminum ion is a product. So when we increase the concentration of a product, uh, the driving force of the electrons decreases and we should see a decrease in our cell potential or a decrease in our voltage. In the next example, we have um, three molar manganese ion, which is a reactant. And if we increase the concentration of a reactant, we should see an increase in the driving force of the electrons and an increase in our cell potential or our voltage. If you wanted to be more quantitative um, about what your um, cell potential would be, what your voltage would be after changing concentrations, you can use something called the Nernst equation. This equation is in your reference packet. Um, however, you will not be required to calculate with it. You can use it uh, more qualitatively to talk about increases or decreases in voltage. So we've got the standard cell potential in here. Uh, we have that uh, constant R. Use the one in joules if you are ever calculating with this. Temperature would be in Kelvin and is going to be your moles of electrons. Uh, there's F again. There's that Faraday constant. And then Q. Um, so Q is the same Q that we've been talking about, the same way we calculate K, uh, only with um, non-equilibrium concentrations. So when Q is greater than 1, uh, remember when we calculate Q or K, that's products over reactants. If we have um, a Q that's greater than one, so we either um, have more product or we have less reactant, um, the natural log of Q will be positive. And so that is going to decrease our voltage. We're gonna be subtracting uh, from our standard cell potential. When Q is less than one, so we have uh, more reactant or we have less product. Uh, the natural log of Q is going to be negative. So our voltage is going to increase. We are going to subtract a negative number, which is like adding, right? And so uh, we'll see an increase in our cell potential or our voltage. When Q equals 1, the natural log of 1 equals 0. Uh, so the voltage would not be changed. It would be um, standard or the same. So since we are talking about Q, let's talk about K for redox reactions, the equilibrium constant. At equilibrium, um, the cell potential is zero volts. We call this a dead battery um, because there is no electron flow. So if you think about the equation uh, we talked about in the last section, with a uh, cell potential of zero, that gives you an answer for delta G that is zero. And we have talked about how uh, delta G at equilibrium is zero. So at equilibrium, there is no driving force of your electrons uh, to push those electrons through. That's what zero volts means. And then there is uh, basically no work that is possible uh, because delta G is zero. Looking at the Nernst equation, you can talk about uh, your cell potential being zero here. And then instead of Q, because we're at equilibrium, we're talking about K. And you get your uh, standard cell potential equal to 
RT divided by NF times the natural log of K. This is not uh, in your reference packet. You certainly can derive it. Uh, however, we have um, talked about uh, a different way uh, that we could calculate the equilibrium constant um, in chapter 17. So this would be one way, uh, and then uh, well, let's review the other way. All right, we have our half reactions uh, and a voltage for each one, both written as reductions. So we want um, a balanced redox reaction. One of those has to be um, an oxidation, right? And we can then calculate the standard cell potential. And we also wanna find the equilibrium constant. And we can uh, use uh, what we talked about on the previous slide, um, a little bit of a modification of that Nernst equation. Or uh, like I said, we can um, review some of the other things that we've talked about in um, chapter 17. So we probably would like to take the half reaction with the chromium and make that our oxidation. Uh, we can take uh, the 0 0.50 volts and then make that positive, right? And get an overall cell potential that's positive. Okay, so I've done that, flipped that around and then flipped the sign um, on my voltage. And then I can uh, add the two equations together after I equalize my number of electrons. So two electrons um, lost and gained. Okay, and uh, here is my balanced uh, equation uh, with my uh, standard cell potential of 0.67 volts. So now for calculating the equilibrium constant, we can use this equation, uh, delta G equals negative NFE along with, from chapter 17, delta G equals negative RT natural log of K to find the delta G and then the equilibrium constant. Into my first equation, I plug in two moles of electrons times the Faraday constant, 96,485, uh, times my uh, voltage, which was 0.67 volts. My delta G is negative 129,289.9 joules, which I think I'm gonna leave unrounded uh, because I'm gonna use that uh, in my second equation to come up with my equilibrium constant. And I'm gonna leave it in joules uh, because that R value is also in joules. So substituting in for delta G and my R value and my temperature in Kelvin, I then can uh, solve for my equilibrium constant. I will round this time 4.6 times 10 to the 22nd. Very product favored, which matches up with thermodynamically favored processes uh, producing product spontaneously and the negative delta G for spontaneous processes or thermodynamically favored processes and the positive cell potential for thermodynamically favored or spontaneous processes as well. The final thing I wanna talk about in this section is a concentration cell where you have uh, basically uh, both compartments with, with the same reaction, same half reaction, um, but with different concentrations. So uh, the idea would be to equalize the concentrations when they're different. Electrons will flow from less to more concentrated as shown in our galvanic cell here. Um, the idea is to um, equalize our concentrations. Uh, something that is less concentrated needs to become more concentrated, like the anode on the left. Uh, here's the half reaction. So as that you know, proceeds and makes um, electrons, um, then we'll increase the concentration here of our ion. And then for our cathode on the right, uh, electrons are gained. And uh, now our silver ion uh, is a reactant. So we'll see a decrease in concentration there um, as uh, silver metal is created. So that's how the uh, concentrations can equalize. So concentration cell, same components, um, but different concentrations. The flow goes from less to more concentrated. 
as shown in the diagram. Finally, in section eight, we're talking about electrolytic cells, which are the opposite of galvanic cells. So uh, to just review, galvanic cells um, utilize spontaneous or thermodynamically favored redox reactions. Um, there is a current produced that can do work. We can talk about uh, negative delta G and uh, that cell potential, that voltage is positive. So for an electrolytic cell, uh, we're basically going to do the opposite. We're going to force a current through a cell um, that will pr you know, produce a chemical reaction uh, for which that cell potential is negative. And that would be for a non-spontaneous or thermo non-thermodynamically favored reaction. Okay, um, And we'll call this process electrolysis. This is how we charge a dead battery. So you plug it in right to your um, outlet um, and uh, basically we are, you know, uh, forcing our reaction to go in reverse um, by uh, uh, using that electricity uh, to charge your battery. Okay, on the left we've got a galvanic cell, uh, anode to cathode for our electron flow, flowing spontaneously. Um, from our, our zinc um, compartment to our copper compartment. For an electrolytic cell, um, we're going to have the same uh, components, same compartments. Electrons are still going to flow anode to cathode, okay? But now we have taken the half reaction that was a reduction in the galvanic cell and now we're making it the oxidation. And the same thing is true for the compartment that was the oxidation in the galvanic cell is now the reduction. And we can do that by applying a power source. And in this particular cell, uh, that power source has to be greater than 1.10 volts uh, to get um, what would now be a non-spontaneous or uh, non-thermodynamically favored reaction to go. One of the things we are particularly interested in um, with electrolytic cells or electrolysis is how much metal uh, will plate out uh, in, the, uh, in the cathode uh, component or compartment um, of our electrolytic cell. So in this particular case, um, how much zinc uh, will plate out as the zinc ion gains electrons and turns into uh, zinc atoms. And that's what we'll talk about next. So if you want to figure out how much of a metal will plate out or how long it would take um, to plate out a certain mass of metal, uh, we can kind of use this problem solving process. Um, we're going to use an equation uh, that's in your reference packet um, that kind of ties together um, current and time. I equals Q over T. So I is the current, and current is in amps. Q is the charge uh, in coulombs, and T is the time in seconds. So say we know our current and our time, uh, then we can calculate our charge in coulombs. And we have a Faraday constant that ties coulombs to moles of electrons. And then we can look at our particular metal, like if we're looking at copper, let's say, how many moles of electrons being, are being gained. And then we can uh, relate that to moles of copper, let's say, if that's our metal, and then grams of copper through molar mass. Let's take a look at an example. We're going to determine the mass of copper that plates out when we have a current of 10 amps and it's uh, passed for 30 minutes. Now we'll want that in seconds uh, through a solution that contains copper ions. So we want to do copper ion um, to copper metal. We'll start with that equation that has um, current and charge and time in it. And our current is 10 amps. And 30 minutes in seconds is 1,800 seconds. So remember, 60 seconds in a minute. 
our charge is 18,000 coulombs. So now let's do a little factor label. We have 18,000 coulombs and the Faraday constant is uh, 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. Then we can cancel our moles of electrons and go to moles of, well, in this case, it's going to be copper uh, atoms, right? And we're going from a um, plus two charge um, to a, a neutral atom, okay? And so that's going to be two moles of electrons that have to be gained in every one mole of copper atoms. And then we can cancel our moles of copper and go to grams of copper by using the molar mass from the periodic table, which is 63.55 grams. And then we just have to calculate our answer. 5.93 grams of copper. Now let's say that um, we want to solve for a time. How long must a current of five amps be applied to a solution of silver ions to produce 10.5 grams of silver? So we're kind of going in reverse. We'll start with our 10.5 grams of silver and we will uh, cancel those grams of silver and go to moles of silver using the molar mass from the periodic table 107.87. Then we will cancel the moles of silver and go to moles of electrons. And for a silver ion with a plus one charge um, to become a silver atom, that would be one mole of electrons. Uh, then we can cancel our moles of electrons and go to coulombs. That's that Faraday constant, uh, 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. And then if you want to stop there uh, with your coulomb answer and then go into the equation that has um, current uh, and charge and time, um, that would be fine. And if you want to rearrange that equation and use it as a factor, that is fine too. Um, but this would be um, 9,392 coulombs, which I then can plug in uh, to my little equation here. Um, my um, current is 5 amps. And my charge is 9,392 coulombs, and I can solve for my time in seconds. That is 1,878 seconds. And if you wanted to convert that to minutes, you could. Um, there are, let's see, uh, 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in an hour. That would be 31.3 minutes.